Hey, welcome back to the channel everyone, or if you're new, welcome for the first time. Uh, before we get started, I just want to point out that in the description of almost every video I make, I have a clickable index. So if you saw something in the title, you can go down in the description and go right to what you're interested in. I try to do accurate titles as well. Uh, we don't do clickbait. You'll never see me out here in yoga pants, thank God. So the goal for today is we're going to trim out the back door. I've got more walnut trim there. Uh, I've got a marine switch panel, then I'm going to work on shingles off camera, show you what I got done, and who knows what else we'll get into. A couple videos ago I was struggling to clean the glass on my wood stove and I got a lot of you <laughs> gave me this tip. Uh, so I can't really give credit. Actually Carl's Off The Grid had a video on it too. Um, you guys gave me the tip to wet some ash and use it as like a slurry to clean this. So we're gonna give that a try, and I mean, I, I think it works because I've seen it work on other people's videos, so. Oh, wow, yeah. No sense making it too perfect, right? Look at that, you can see right through it. Cool. Thank you, everyone. All right, so I had the wood to trim out this back door last week, but some dummy, not naming any names, uh, installed it crooked so that this side is a quarter of an inch set in from the pine. And this side is three eighths and a little more. Three eighths plus a sixteenth, what is that? That's, uh, that's seven sixteenths. Uh, I can already hear the Europeans typing comments about the metric system. Not a word from you. In America, we like our fractions complicated. Anyway, I got, I got the trim. I got different sizes of trim, so we're gonna get that in. Now let's split. That's a pretty good fit. Okay, so if I have got the focus right, you will notice that this is a quarter inch or so thicker than this. Luckily, we have a good tool to deal with that, the block plane. This is an awesome tool and the good news is that there were so many of these made that these can just be found so easily. I mean, this was a $10 marketplace find. It works perfect. It's old, it's solid, you know, it's well built. Um, there's, there's no excuse not to find one of these and buy it. It's so useful, you won't regret it. I should make like a clickbait video, like the one tool everyone needs. I, ca I can't bring myself to do that, but I would definitely suggest you look for one of these and it won't be expensive. And so I'll just have to keep nail setting these screws in, but you know, you just keep doing that until it's flush with that. All right, we got this pretty much all planed out. It wasn't fun, but it worked. All right, so that was actually kind of a pain hand planing it down. I thought about making a jig in the shop on the table saw and doing it, and I was like, ah, I'll just plane it, but. All right, so people have been asking for me to bring back an old friend or nemesis, the magic hammer, and I didn't want to get blocked into being the guy with the magic hammer, so I didn't do it for a while, but this is probably a good job for it, so we'll give it a try. Ah, that says you're cool. It usually just insults me, that's kind of nice. Oh, all right, well, be nice if it would actually do the work. Oh, all right, that says you're not cool, in case you can't read. That's usually, that's why I never use it. All right, maybe the third time's a charm. There we go, that's looking better. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I love the way this wood looks. 
So that uh, that lighter bit there is sapwood, and that's that's just another reason you can get this wood. Uh, hopefully, a little cheaper. It's because you know most people don't want the sapwood, but I think it looks pretty cool. And we've got some knots that even fell out there, but uh, it still functions as trim. I've got some chair rail, so I want to put this piece in here. All right, so I've actually, instead of measuring, I've marked this off from the board. One of the things that I've realized for me is that if that from doing woodworking, that if you really want to be precise, marking usually works better than measuring. There we go. And I, I, for really precision stuff, I actually prefer hand tools to power tools. Get our, oh yeah, see that's tight, perfect. Cool. There we go, and that corner is starting to look good. I don't think I have any baseboard here, otherwise I'd like to do that. And then this is going to be repeat info for the people who have been watching me for a while. But one of the things I like to do is I like to vary the thicknesses on the pieces. So this is three quarter and this is seven eighths. So you get a little line there. I think that looks kind of cool. Just something easy you can do. And then another little thing you can do. This piece here is called a fillet. That's a freeze and that's a cap. Um, and that's, that's a craftsman style trim. But you can just put those little things in there to break up your lines and it, it kind of just makes it look neat. At least I like the way it looks. All right, while we're doing chair rail, we might as well do this little bit right here because I got enough for that. All right. Let's put that sapwood down. Wow, I don't even need nails there, see? <laughs> Oh, this level too. Yeah, let's not mess with that. That's good. Woo. All right, let's get you all a closer look at that. Cool, and it covers the nails up. All right, so now that that door is done, I, I'm kind of at a standstill for trim because I got to build this door here first before I do any more trim uh, baseboards. I guess I could do that little bit of baseboard there, but I'm basically at a standstill. And then this front door, I really screwed it up when I put it in and I need to like come here when I don't have the pressure of making a video and like take some of that wainscoting off and basically take out the screws and cut the insulation and fix it because right now it's adjusted as far as it can go and it doesn't shut that well um, so whoever put that in didn't do a very good job which actually brings me to the next question is what would you guys like to see me work on next i need a shop project to work on when i'm not here so i could do the base or i, I could do the cabinet face plates in the shop and work on that um, I could do staircase to the loft, work on that, um, kind of fancy staircase with cool joinery. Um, I could do the loft railing. Um, that's probably not as high of urgency just because the only people who go up there are Patrick and Michael and that's like once or twice a year. Um, or I could work on this door. That would probably be popular with Sarah because that'd be one step closer to a functioning bathroom. Um, so let me know let me know what you'd like to see me work on next. I mean eventually it's all gonna get done, but I'm guessing it's gonna be the cabinets because I get a lot of comments about finishing those cabinets. So um, but let me know in the comments and I'll work on whatever you guys think.
Unless Sarah vetoes it. Sarah has veto power. And she, <laughs> you guys are going to give Sarah and Vita, uh, you're going to give Sarah and Beatrice a very big head because every video that they're in gets like twice the videos that are just me. That's it. Sarah and I both can get through here. It's kind of tight, and let's be honest, at this point in my life, my weight's probably only going in one direction, and some of our guests probably won't be able to fit through here. So what, I, what I'm planning on doing is rounding off this corner. I can probably gain about inch and a half, two inches. That'll hold me for maybe five years if I'm lucky and if I exercise. But all right, while we're on the subject of this area, I've got that marine panel um, I got a, a waterproof one, so just because I don't know, it'd be hard to spill water over here or somehow water get to it from the underneath, but I got a waterproof one just in case. And so that is what it looks like. I will probably take this voltmeter out and put a USB-C charger. I found one that can supposedly charge my laptop. Um, without having to go from DC to AC back to DC. So we're gonna put that in there and just stay on DC. Um, and then I'll use these switches for something. So this, don't be confused by all these wires. Basically the red and the black, everything is wired in parallel. And then the blue and the yellow are just operating these little lights down here. So um, I don't want those on, I'll probably take the blue and the yellow stuff out. All right, so I drew a square here. I don't know if it'll show up or not. So we're gonna drill this and cut this out. Whoops. Don't do that. That's gonna be covered up though. Oh, but my blade is bent, whoops. No, I gotta cut some more off the bottom. So what's going on here is we've got a red wire, a red positive wire coming in. These are the switch and the charger are in parallel or our negative wire just running to um, the charger. So what we got to do is disconnect this stuff. We'll put this guy on a way go here. take this I've already tested this it does fit it's kind of tight but it fits and we'll put this in there all right so we're gonna we're gonna cut the spade connector off our negative because we don't need that strip that put it in our way go connect the negative I didn't pull a fuse, so this should just work. And there we go. And then when it's on, lights up, right? But none of these are connected. So now all we gotta do is take the spade connector that goes back up to the light, right? The light is off, you can't see it, but I can see the lights off. All right, and we can put it on the output of any one of these switches. Um, Something and we'll put it on the first one. There it is, okay. So the output is this one here. So that is cool, that's working. And so what I'll do with these other switches is there's an outlet over there that is kind of overcrowded. Um, it's got the pump and then it's got the can lights that are in the ceiling. I will take those and put them on this one. And then eventually what I may do is just run the power of this panel through this switch so I can shut this voltage meter in this off or so I can shut the whole thing off if I don't want these. It might be annoying when you're, if people are sleeping out here in the main room at the night to have those on. So that's what we may do. And there you go. That looks pretty cool. I got some, some uh, inch and a quarter drywall screws. All right, I should have checked the packaging that actually came with screws that match better. So whoops, but looks good now. Wiring that DC switch panel um, does make me want to bring up a good point about safety. So in the United States, when you're dealing with alternating current, if you run a 15 amp outlet 
uh, pretty much everything that you could buy to plug in to that outlet should be UL listed and safe to plug into it. Um, so you basically have to protect the wire size. 15 amp wire or, or 14 gauge wire, you gotta have a 15 amp breaker. With DC though, you gotta be one step more careful. So I ran 14 amp wire, but with that switch panel, it says on the packaging, if you're running 20 volts, that it's rated for 10 amps. So even though my wire could take a 15 amp fuse, I've gotta put a 10 amp fuse in there. So if you guys are doing stuff with DC power, um, you gotta make sure you protect the wire, but you've also gotta protect the device. Um, and then another thing that came up, so in this other video I did where I um, insulated the loft, I spent like the first five minutes of the video putting the wire into conduit. And then I came over here, I wired a switch in the bathroom, and I said, I don't have any boxes, um, but I wanted to move that switch over. So I, I didn't put it in the conduit because I didn't have the box. So I knew I was gonna have to redo it. Um, but then I still got a bunch of comments that you can't run single strand, non-sheathed wire without um, conduit. And that is true. Um, I th kind of thought that that was a given, but just because it's a safety issue, I wanna draw attention to it is that those, those single wires will eventually go in conduit when I have all the stuff that I need to put it in conduit. All right, well, it's gonna get dark in like an hour and I still have to put away more stuff that Sarah sent back with me. So <laughs> we're not gonna to get to the shingles today. The shingles must feel like uh, Matt Damon trying to go on Jimmy Kimmel. Sorry, shingles, we'll get to you next week. <laughs> right, on that note, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. And uh, regarding the lens that I'm giving away, this is being filmed only three days after that episode aired. So I haven't decided yet. So, but anyone who commented, I uh, I've seen your comment, and I also need to apologize. I'm I'm so far behind on comments, and it, it actually stresses me out, um, and it makes me feel guilty. Um, so I'm going to really try and get caught up on comments here. It's, I I really feel bad when I don't write back to your comments. So um, please don't hold it against me. I'm I'm going to try to get to them all.